it's been two decades um, since uh, Steve Jobs returned to Apple. Um, they would have called it uh, the failing Apple computer at that point. Um, Walt Mossberg had actually written Apple's obituary in the Wall Street Journal. Uh, I, Michael Dell. Michael Dell. Said, take the money back and give it to the shareholders. Pack it up and give it back to the shareholders. And uh, I, I was the beat reporter covering Apple at the time for, for uh, the New York Times. And I wasn't quite so, uh, so sure. Uh, but after Steve came back, pretty quickly, one of the things he did is he made sure that Apple spoke with just one voice, and that was Steve's. And, um, but before he did that, I was able to do one profile of an Apple designer, um, Johnny Ive, uh, and uh, the, the profile ran in the home and garden section of the New York Times. <laughs> I don't think anybody read it but Steve. But, um, and, and then several years later, after the door had really uh, slammed shut, um, I did another story about, you know, the, the iPod had become this uh, incredible and unexpected success. And I, and I wrote a story in the Sunday Times about that. And I kind of described uh, the role that the gentleman sitting next to me had. And um, that led to several things. Uh, one thing it did was it irritated Steve Jobs. And um, it, it led to me getting a new cycling partner, actually. Uh, and so for the last 12 years, we've been riding bikes out to, to, the, uh, to the coast from behind Stanford. I, I just for the record, I'd like to say when we started, I was actually faster than Tony. Um, <laughs> sadly, sadly, that's no longer the case. Uh, I, I think that's that's because he moved to France where they, you know, mm -hmm. there's better training and stuff like that. <laughs> so, so today we're mostly going to talk about building and design, designing and building an iPhone. But I, I wanted to, to 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 get into it by uh, asking. So, Tony, you know, so let's start by talking how you came to computing. Because I, I think my sense is that you didn't, I mean, in, in Silicon Valley, I often run into engineers, and they come from families of engineers. I mean, it's like engineers all the way down, or scientists. <laughs> you had a slightly different... Slightly different. Upper, so what, where, where did you come out? Where, how did you get into an engineering mindset? And I think it was pretty early? It was very early. Um, my grandfather started when I was about three years old, would take me around, and we would he would show me how to fix things in the house. So much to my grandmother's chagrin and my mother's chagrin, I was sitting there like changing electrical outlets at three and four years old, like fixing that or fixing plumbing with him or painting a wall or something. And then, he, then as my brother got older, we would do that together with him. So every weekend or evening, he would just go, hey, we're gonna go do this together, we're gonna do that. And so he would take us around and just teach us how to use tools and hammers and saws and power tools and you know, every time my mother's like, have they lost a finger yet? You know, or whatever. So it was always this, you know, we were always immersed in, you, he, he was from a generation from the, you know, the depression, Great Depression. So he had to do everything himself. And what was, what was he by profession? For? So interestingly enough, my, my grandfather was a teacher and, and a professor and then he was a superintendent of the Hamtramck School District in Detroit. And so it was education? So he was education the entire time. So he did that and then in his off time, he would have uh, like vocational training to get the truants off the street back in the, in the 40s. He would bring them in and then he would train them on doing auto work or woodwork or something like that. So part of your time you were in Michigan, but a lot of time you moved around too. I went to 12 schools in 15 years. So it was always, we were always moving back and forth. Your dad wasn't in the army. <laughs> no, my dad was not in the army. My dad was in the rag business, in the clothing business. Yeah. And so he wor worked with Levi's as head of sales in different parts of the US all the time. We would move every two to three years to different places to... So, when did you bump into computing for the first time? So for me, I saw it the very earliest days in about 1979, 79. We had just moved back to Detroit from Rochester, New York. And there was a computer class. It was a summer computer class. It was in fourth grade or something. And it, I, I was like, we had heard about this thing called the computer, you know, it was in kind of in the popular press. And I was like, I don't know what it was, but I was like, I gotta do that. My parents go, they didn't know what it was either. Like, okay, sure, it was a summer school. And literally we had, 
it was an IBM 360 mainframe somewhere, uh, and then we had uh, paper terminals. It was just paper terminals and a card reader, bubble card. So we would sit there and we would put in all of so some kind of basic. And it was basic. And we'd do basic and we would make the stack and we do, you know, 10, print, blah, go to, you know, 20, go to 10. You know, this kind of thing. And you have your stack of cards. And I was instantly hooked, right? And then we'd play Oregon Trail and, and that was fourth grade, right? And I was like, wow, this is great. So the Apple II was out in the world, but that was not your first exposure to paper. No, that, the very first thing was that paper terminal. And, and I could like make things and draw things. I was like, this is cool. You know, and then I, I was like, I gotta have a computer. And after that, was, and my grandfather had taught me all about tools and everything. And he didn't know anything about computers at all. But he saw it as a modern day tool. And he's like, you're really into that. And he's like, I go, and it was like $2,500, right? To get an Apple II back then with a green screen. And he was, and I was like, I need to have it. And it, so he said, look, you go out and work this summer, and I will match whatever you make to help you get the computer. And so by the end of the summer, I was a caddy, and I was cad carrying bags, you know, golf clubs, working my ass off, carrying two bags of clubs, and, you, know, you know, multiple rounds a day. And he matched it, and we went to computer land in St. Clair Shores, Michigan, and I was, you know, my 48K Mac, or Mac, 48K Apple II, right? And then, Brought it home and it was my life. You were 12? What was it? 11? <clears throat> was 11. 11? Yeah. 11. But it wasn't, uh, it wasn't all gaming then, but you were not a hardcore gamer? Or were you a hardcore gamer? I, you know, it was just, it was just after Atari. So we had Atari, you know, playing our own. We had Fairchild system yeah. way back when, the Fairchild gaming system. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I was in it, but it was kind of out of it. And it was really the Apple II, and then I could make my own games and, and do all kinds of stuff. So, but and pretty quickly you got to uh, to your first startup. How quickly? <laughs> How quickly? So I then we moved to Dallas, and in Dallas, I needed to stay in touch with all my friends that I had back in Michigan. So that's when I got a 300 baud modem, and that's when we started phone freaking. And we were hacking, you know, Sprint and MCI were the like latest things. You had codes and all that stuff. So we started hacking the phone system so I could call my friends back in Michigan because it was way too expensive. So, but not not with blue boxes. No, they weren't blue boxes. It was just we were doing, you know, we were running computer programs to try to find the codes that worked with, That's right. right? You know, to to get in. So, how did that lead to a business? So. <laughs> the other guy, another guy that I knew, he was running a BBS on his Apple II back in Michigan. So I would log on to the BBS. So I was saying, oh, well, we were in, so we were in Dallas for ninth grade and tenth grade. Or no, no, tenth and eleventh grade. And I was like, oh, I'm coming back to Michigan for senior year because I went to four different high schools. So I was like, I'm coming back. And he's like, and this guy's like, I'm starting this business. And he was just one year older than me, so he had just graduated. I'm starting this business selling Apple II here. Do you want to join me? And I'm like, absolutely. And it turned out what we were doing is we were buying all these applied engineering cards from you know Texas back in the day, which I was in, right? Because applied engineering was in Plano, Texas, where I was living. And we were buying it, and then we were writing software to make those Apple II cards, the applied engineering cards, run more Efficient. So that was assembly at that point. What were you? Did, how we were doing. Were you? We were doing actually uh, Pascal and assembly. So we we're doing Pascal and assembly, and creating um, software to help you put in the the bigger memory boards and do uh, you know Apple Works. You know, make Apple so Works run all, in bigger memory. All self-taught by the, at this point. All well. Truth be told. I went to computer math class. Back then we had computer math class, right? And this was in 1981, I think it was. Computer math is what it was called. And I went every day because I wanted to go. But I got thrown out of class every day in computer math class. Because? 
because either I was like, that's not the way you do it, you do it this way. So I either got thrown out in the first two minutes or I got thrown out in the last five minutes or I would help the girls like program their stuff or blah, 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 blah. Like, I was always like causing trouble. So my parents had to come to school, <laughs> talk to the teachers and the principal and they said, okay, you're gonna do a language, but you're gonna do Spanish and French we're going to take you out, and you're going to run the computer math club after school. So that was the whole thing. So I couldn't go to that class anymore, but I could like run my own class after school. So, so what happened to the business? Did you make money? Yeah, absolutely. So in the business, so we, it was just the two of us, and we bought all the stuff, and then we had, to, we had Apple Insider Magazine and all those crazy things. And so we would make our own ads and have them printed, and then we had a phone line, right? And people would send in, you know, on a, you know, on a envelope. They send in their orders with their checks, and then we would ship it out with our software and what have you. And we were doing hundreds of thousands of dollars in sales a month. So, what happened to the business when you went to school? So, I I continued to program and do stuff from school, and then ultimately, um, it was turning into educational software. So we were going really educational. All the educational uh, schools needed this stuff. Which you were buying and reselling or you were writing? We were buying, reselling, and writing. We were doing all of that stuff. And doing all the customer support work. And so he wanted to continue the business, said that's fine, but I want to go to some other things. And he ultimately grew up to like 80 people in St. Clair Shores. We were doing millions of dollars in business a month reselling and then it got into the math and stuff like that. Were you in, were you in college by this time? I was in college. So I stayed on for another for freshman year because I did the app with the Apple Fests and the Mac Fest, you know, the, the computing yeah. conventions and we would have a booth and all that stuff. And it was great. Had you become a fanboy by that time? Terms oh, I had been a fanboy like, you know, way before, before I had my first Apple II and then it, it was sunk in, right? And so you, you get to college, and what are you going to be? What? Oh, I knew what I was going to be. I didn't even know I was going to go to college. Actually, um, I decided that I wasn't going to go to college. I decided we were going to do this business, and we were going to continue to start up and you know, figure out where I was going to go. Because I was like, yeah, I wasn't really enamored with it. And then, literally 48 hours before I was graduating from high school, the acceptance letter came from U of M. And I was like, Okay, <laughs> why not? And so that's what I did. And and the first in the first two weeks of school, I wasn't even there because business. because I was at Apple Fest in Boston. Said it, we were driving out, setting up the thing, and then you know I told my parents, I'm like, hey, they're like, where are you? I'm like, Boston. They're like, we're paying to send you to college. What the hell? It's the first two weeks of school. I wasn't even there. Like it, it, it was just always on the brain. So, but you were sort of on a double E trajectory right from the start. Uh, so computer engineering from the start, absolutely. So computer engineering was a hardware major and a, a CE major, so both, or EE and CS major. Yeah. Dual. 